So about a year ago, I was just going through my daily routine thinking about my blog. You see, my blog, nichepursuits.com, has been around since 2011. And when I was checking my Google Analytics, I saw the same thing I'd seen for years. My traffic was mostly stagnant and not really growing. Sure, getting 3,000 visitors a day is nice, but my site could be so much bigger. I thought, if I'm sick of seeing the same results, I need to do something different. I need to go bigger. What would happen if I went all in on my blog for an entire year? Could I double or triple the traffic? That's it, I'm going all in. So in 2022, I decided to go big and I set a goal to publish 1,000 blog posts in just 12 months. Publish 1,000 blog posts well, it's been a year later now, and today I'm going to share the results and the exact strategies that I implemented. But first, let's take a look at the results. So in the past 12 months, my site has gone from getting maybe two or 3,000 visitors a day all the way up to 15 or 16,000 visitors a day, or even more, like this day where I got nearly 22,000 visitors. We can also take a look at the growth in the weekly view. And you can see how dramatic that change is from weekly visitors of maybe 13, 14, 15,000, all the way now to over 115,000 uh, in the most recent week. Or we can take a look at the traffic trends in the monthly view. So at the end of last year, just over 71,000 visitors in the month. And then in December this year, exactly 12 months later, 410,000 sessions in a month. That's a total growth in one year of 472%. The fact that I was able to take a blog that has been around for over a decade and explode the growth in just 12 months is still mind-blowing to me. So where did all the traffic growth come from? Well, mostly from Google. That's right, SEO for the win. Now, here's a look at the traffic in Google Search Console over the past 16 months. You can see that, again, this is just showing traffic from Google, organic search traffic, going from, you know, maybe 2,200 visitors, 2,000 visitors a day, now to recently, you know, 9,000 or some days over 10,000 uh, clicks in a single day. And here's a look at organic traffic in uh, Google Analytics. I am comparing last December to this December, and you can see that organic traffic grew by 585%, which was bigger than the overall growth of the site. So most of the traffic growth is coming from organic search. In addition, you can see the traffic breakdown of traffic channels, uh, organic traffic being nearly 75% of the overall traffic, followed by direct and then referral traffic. Even Ahrefs shows this massive spike in traffic over the past year, which is quite amazing. Now, I actually have a confession to make. Even though I set a goal to publish 1,000 blog posts, I didn't quite make it. Overall, my team and I published 878 articles in 2022. So I didn't reach my goal, but I went big and I saw massive results. Honestly, there is so much more that went into achieving these results than just publishing a ton of content. Let's jump into the exact seven steps that I followed to increase my traffic from Google by 585%. So step one, clean up old content. Any site that's been around for a few years likely needs to remove or redirect underperforming content. First, I went to Google Analytics and I went to behavior, site content, and all pages. And I've already sorted by page views. And any articles that were getting less than around 10 visitors a month, right? So if it's only getting one, two, maybe 10 visitors a month, was on the potential chopping block. These are articles that I looked at as potentially removing. So if an article was getting less than say 10 visitors a month and two didn't have any valuable links in Ahrefs or three didn't serve a topical cluster purpose, then I deleted the content and did a 410 redirect, which tells Google that this page is gone forever. I ended up deleting well over 100 articles. 
For example, here's an old year in review blog post that I did on my site. Thanks to archive.org, we can still see that. But I used to do lots of these income reports or personal updates. And well, it turns out that no one visits or cares about those posts years later. So I removed these posts from my site. If an article had valuable links but wasn't getting any traffic, I 301 redirected those URLs to another relevant article or my homepage, and I used Yoast SEO redirects to do that. The final step in cleaning up old content is fixing broken links. I use Link Whisper to get a full report of all broken links on my site and then quickly edit or remove those links. As you can see, you can simply hover over the link that you want to edit, or if you want to remove the link or even multiple links at once, you just select the links and remove. This feature of Link Whisper seriously saved me hours of time so that I didn't have to go into each blog post one at a time and remove broken links. Step two, restructure your site. I knew I wanted to publish more content and so I needed to make sure that my categories were appropriate to fit all the new types of content I wanted to cover. In my case, I needed to create and remove several categories to better fit the new direction of my site. I ended up adding four or five new categories and removing a few. Next, I did a full internal link audit since I had removed so much content and changed categories. Did I still have internal links pointing to unimportant content? Did I have too many or too few internal links pointing to articles? I used Link Whisper to quickly see how many internal links each article had. If an article was a pillar article that I wanted more traffic from Google, like this how to build niche sites article, I might add several internal links to it. Or if an article had a bunch of internal links and it was an article I wasn't really trying to rank in Google, like this guest post uh, about white hat link building that was written several years ago, I would go in and quickly remove a bunch of internal links. Yes, it took time to add or remove all these internal links, but Link Whisper made it so much easier. The final step to cleaning up my old content was to analyze my topical coverage and fill keyword gaps. What I did was use a WordPress export plugin to export all my posts by category. Then I analyzed this spreadsheet to see if I truly had enough articles related to a topic that could all work as a topical cluster, or if I had missing gaps where I needed to produce new content. As you can see from this spreadsheet, I took all of my existing content, put it by category, topical cluster, maybe even a subtopic, and then I looked at it. And for example, this drop shipping, uh, what is drop shipping might be my pillar article. And I had a few existing drop shipping articles, as you can see down here. But as I went through and analyzed, I was missing a lot of topics that would really round out a topical cluster as it relates to drop shipping. And so this was my keyword research. I put the search volume, the keyword difficulty, and these would be new topics that I would uh, cover to fully have a topical cluster. And the idea is that all of these articles would then link back to the what is drop shipping, the overall pillar article when somebody's Googling drop shipping or what is drop shipping. As you can imagine, this spreadsheet took a long time to put together and organize, but it really helped me to better understand my site, the missing gaps in the content, and have a better content plan going forward. Step three, create a professional looking website. I did a complete brand and site redesign in order to look more professional, help people trust my site more, and possibly even stay on the site longer, which I believe helps Google know that my site is valuable. Here's a look at what my site used to look like just one year ago. And here's a look at what my site looks like now. In addition, my site took a major leap forward in being more mobile friendly, which I personally think has had a huge impact on increased traffic. However, I did more than just a simple site redesign. I also worked with a tech person to dive into Google Search Console and make sure that I was passing all core web vitals. Uh, there actually may be some updates that I need to make ongoing, but we've done a lot of work to improve the core web vitals of the site. In addition, we had errors to fix, including review snippets not showing up properly after the redesign. However, using Google Search Console to find and fix those errors was extremely helpful. Step four, standardize publishing processes. As much as I would have loved to write 878 blog posts myself, there is no way I could have done it without a team. I mean, I've got lots of things keeping me busy already.
I hired well over 20 authors and had multiple editors to help out with all the publishing. However, first, you need to develop a publishing process so that everyone can be on the same page. Now, here's a look at my standard operating procedures for nichepursuits.com. Uh, this spreadsheet, all authors have access to, and there's a nine-step process that they follow here, uh, along with a lot of instructions. And there is a lot here, more than I can go over in this video, but it's important that you document your procedures. I want them to know the structure, uh, how to find article length, and format, additional details, and so many things. Uh, so an author will come in here, they'll actually come over to this Keywords to Target tab. They will assign themselves, they'll write the name next to the article. They'll follow these steps here. And then when they're all done, they'll move it over to the Completed Articles tab. And here's a look at the Niche Pursuits Trello board that all my authors use. They come in here, they add an article, uh, and then they write an outline for that. Those outlines get approved. Once they're approved, uh, we then move it over here and then the author will write and format the content. And this is all done. We have a, a Surfer SEO link that they use uh, to help them get that outline. Uh, and then they move that article to editor review. Once the editor has reviewed that, they move it to the create blog featured image where we have a graphic designer feat, uh, create a featured image. And then it's moved to the final review stage uh, where a senior editor or myself will review that. And once we do that, we hit publish and then move it to the add internal links. Uh, after it's already live and published. We add some internal links, then we move it over to the final stage. So we use Trello to really organize uh, the content flow and make sure it's working properly. A big part of the process was adding three or four outbound internal links to other articles on nichepursuits.com. This was made much easier with Link Whisper. You can see that Link Whisper suggests internal links as you write, and all you have to do is select the links that you want, and it will automatically add those to your article once you hit insert links into post. We would also add three or four external links to other valuable websites. And finally, as soon as we hit publish on an article, we would add at least one inbound internal link to the article. Again, this was made so much easier with Link Whisper. You just click add next to the link that you want to add or add multiple at once. And then that internal link will be automatically added as soon as you click the, the Add Links button. This ensures that we never have any orphan posts and that Google can easily index and rank each of these articles. Overall, I created these SOPs to have a smooth publishing process and to remove myself as a bottleneck in the business as much as possible. After all, as the business owner, I clearly have more important things to keep me occupied. I kind of got my hands full right here. Could you go ahead and hit subscribe? Thank you. Step five, publish tons of new content. Yes, in 2022, we published 878 articles. I missed my goal of a thousand articles, but I'm definitely still happy with the results. So what keywords should you target? Well, you should follow Google's lead and fill out the topical clusters on your site. I've already discussed how I organized my topical clusters, so let's focus on the strategy of following Google's lead. For example, in Google Search Console, you can see what keywords your articles are showing up for that you may not even be targeting. This could be a great new article. How to become a product tester is not really targeting the exact keyword that I was going after. Um, Google is telling me that my site has some authority on the subject. So if I created a new article targeting this specific phrase, for example, um, I might have a good shot at ranking. Another way to follow Google's lead is to look at Google Analytics and see what types of articles you are getting traffic for already. In my case, I noticed that I was getting decent traffic to articles related to affiliate programs. So I went all in and published dozens more articles related to this topic. In another case, I had an article related to side hustles for teens. So I started producing more content for business and teenagers because Google was making it clear that my site can rank well for that type of content. I literally found dozens of packs of keywords like this throughout the year. I just looked at what was already ranking well for me and then produced a bunch more content with a similar type of keyword, structure, and topic. In 2022, we published 633 keyword-focused articles for SEO purposes. 
We also publish 245 podcast episodes, success stories, or other types of content. This content may not bring in much SEO traffic, but it does attract links and often brings in discover and social media traffic in the short term. Step six, update content regularly. In total, we updated 119 articles throughout the year. Wait, does that mean between new articles and the 119 article updates, I actually hit my goal of publishing a thousand articles in the year? Is that some sort of goal loophole? Let's see, 119 plus 878 equals, oh, 997. Well, so close. Here's my content update spreadsheet. I put my highest traffic articles that haven't been updated over a year or articles that I feel like have the most monetary potential on this list to be updated. So as you can see, we have lots of columns. The basic idea is we document the start position, start surfer score or market muse score, and then we update that based on those suggestions from market muse or surfer. And then we uh, basically document the whole process and make sure that we are updating it and providing value. Once we publish these updates, we also do an internal link audit to ensure that relevant internal links are pointing to the article, removing links as needed, and then hopefully add new internal links. We use Link Whisper to make this entire process much faster and easier. Step seven, optimize site to make more money. So did all the increased traffic lead to more money? Absolutely. My site makes money in four different ways. First, affiliate commissions come through call to action buttons and links. We added a ton of these in the past year to encourage more clicks. Second, I make money from email subscribers. I make money through sponsorships or additional affiliate commissions with my list. Third, I sell my own software products or I'm a partner in a number of businesses. So I have links throughout my website or I promote in my email list other products that I own. Spoiler alert here, I make most of my money from my own products and business partnerships. As traffic grows to nichepursuits.com, my products get more eyeballs and conversions. Finally, I recently added display ads to my site since my traffic had increased so much. Although display ads is a smaller source of income, it definitely is starting to add up. Uh, as you can see from my Mediavine dashboard here, you know, I'm making anywhere from 350 to 450 or more uh, dollars per day. And I'm told that RPMs are low right now in the beginning of the year. Um, so I should see an increase on that as well. Overall, I'm happy with uh, the amount I'm making with Mediavine ads. Overall, that's how I've been able to increase my organic traffic from Google by 585% in the past 12 months. Now, before you go, I wanted to give you a special discount on Link Whisper. Since I'm the creator of Link Whisper and it truly has played a central role in growing my traffic to niche pursuits, I thought it made sense. Please click the link that is appearing on the screen for this video right now to see the biggest discount I'm currently offering. On that page, you'll see a special coupon code I've created for viewers of this video only. This discount really is for a limited time. So be sure to check the countdown timer to see how much time is left before this discount on Link Whisper expires. You can also find a link in the description for the special Link Whisper discount. Overall, the past year for Niche Pursuits has been incredible. I encourage you to set big goals, work with smart people, and execute on those goals. So I've given you the seven steps you need to see big growth from Google. The question is, will you implement what you've learned? Hey, I'm gonna slam these Cheerios real quick. Maybe you can go ahead and slam that subscribe button for me. Thanks.